Hi, this reflection is for the 9th of May and it's on the passage John 15, 9 to 17. Now, I really love this passage. There's just so much in it that I could pick out. So actually today, um, I'm going to just pick out lots of little things that stood out to me and, and spoke to me rather than one bigger theme or anything like that. So lots of little things on lots of different verses. Um, now this obviously comes um, under part of the teaching where Jesus is teaching about the vine and the branches and he's talked about being the true vine and remaining in him. So this part of the passage comes directly after that. And it does start with, as the Father has loved me, so, have loved, so I have loved you. And my first thought as I read that was just what God's love is like. It's infinite, it's all encompassing, it's never failing. And that is how God loved um, God the Father loved Jesus and how Jesus then loves us as well, as he talks about later. Um, he then says, remain in my love. Um, and if you obey my commands, you'll remain in his love. And there's an if there, there's a choice there. It's our choice to remain in him and follow his commands. He's not going to take away our free will in that in that sense. Um, and actually it's on us to do that, to follow his command and remain in his love. And obviously he talks about what those commands are in a moment. Um, the next section is to do with uh, his joy and his joy filling us. So it then says, um, my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. And just that sense again of the difference between God's joy and worldly joy. And that sense that there's a bit in all of us, that puzzle piece, that bit in our centre where God's joy is meant to fill. Um, that sense that nothing else in this life will fill that. Everything else in this life that will try and fill that hole is going to be fleeting. And God's joy just transcends our circumstance. That in um, every situation, his joy um, is still present, sort of despite our circumstance. And I love that reminder of the day, particularly after the last year and a half that we've had. Um, God's joy just overcomes all of that. Now then we move on to the command that Jesus is talking about. And he says, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. And again, it's that reminder of how God loved, the God the Father loved, God the, loved, loved the Son, and then how Jesus loves us. And then it is that reminder, isn't it, that he literally laid down his life for, his, for us. He made the ultimate sacrifice for us. And that is how he's asking us and calling us to love others. And it just got me thinking really about what a sacrificial love looks like and what I would be willing to give up, give up for those around me to love them. Um, and also just that question of well, what, what does that realistically and practically look like in my life? Does that mean that actually tomorrow that might mean that as I walk past someone at work and I can see that they're having a bit of a difficult day, actually pausing and stopping my day to give them my time and my ear to listen? Does that mean actually um, going to see somebody or getting in touch with somebody I haven't seen much over the last year for obvious reasons, um, but who I know actually might just need um, some support and some friendship right now even if at the moment my life is a bit busy um and it's things like that it's thinking well what actually can I be doing that actually it might it might be a sacrifice for me it might take something out of my um time and energy and finances to do but actually um that's not even a small part is it of what Jesus did for us on the cross um and it just puts that into perspective so that's a just a question um, to have a think about today of what could that look like in your life today and then we move on to how Jesus is talking about we're his friends and actually um, if you have a master they don't always fill you in on their plans but if you have a friend you know what's going on you know what they're about you know what they're doing and it's that sense that as we walk with Jesus as we remain in him um, he is our friend he does fill us in he does keep us in the loop and actually we can see what he's doing and why he's doing it um, and we get to journey with him um, and we do follow him but we do journey alongside him and with him and holding his hand as well um, and that is just a little bit different isn't it um, and the last little thing little snippet that I picked out today is where it says you did not choose me but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit fruit will all last and it's that reminder again isn't it of that we are chosen for a purpose we are chosen because God has an individual and unique plan for each one of us and he has individual and unique fruit for us to bear and I love that little bit where it says fruit that will last because actually um lots of things we do in our own strength 
don't always last today but actually if we're doing things with God and we know that it's things that God has asked us to do and God is working with us in it is things that will have um, an impact for for time to come and I found that a real encouragement today so overall with this passage I just felt encouraged today I felt lifted up and I just was so reminded of what God's love and joy looks like um, and I don't know what my day will look like today I don't know if it will be busy if it will be stressful um, what it will look like but actually just that reminder that God's love and God's joy is bigger than all of that um, and it transcends transcends my circumstance on my day I hope you have a great day everyone thanks